Hotep or die. All right, everybody, welcome to Aquarian Anarchy. Um, I'm Chad. I'm going to start this one off this way because uh, I, I invited Unc on, and so I'm going to introduce him. Uh, you see Marcus and Nico over there as well, and um, we are one week away from the most important election of our lifetimes yet again, and so <laughs> we, have, we have a very special guest who... Uh, I don't think he really needs an introduction, but I'm going to do it anyway. Um, I started, I, I actually kind of caught up with you when I started uh, following, following Brian, Hotep Jesus, and um, actually kind of ran into you through, I probably saw some of the stuff on Twitter and everything, but I think it was mostly through uh, early Hotep's Been Told You uh, episodes. And I don't know, just it's, there's a, uh, so I have this, as Marcus was saying, we, we're kind of like the anarchist voluntarist um don't fuck with the politics stuff um, t type of crowd. But I have, we, we both came from kind of like this old, like Glenn Beck and Ron Paul Republican sort of conservative uh, value stream too. And so there's a lot of that that um, really resonated with me um, relative to you. So uh, thank you for, for coming on. And uh, I just wanted to, to kind of kick it off with like with that part, because I know you, you had talked about, possibly wanting to vote for Ron Paul in, in 08 and then, uh, kind of got, kind of got, uh, guilted into <laughs> to pull it. And so I, I was the same way. And then I went, but I, I, I went the opposite direction. I was like, no, I gotta, I, I held my nose and voted, uh, McCain Palin like an idiot. Um, and God, I, I like, it was just like, oh, I don't even want to talk about it, but anyway, what's up? Well, what? I, I think if, if it was McCain Obama, I mean, if it was Ron Paul, yeah, Obama. I think I I, I would have stuck to my guns. Yeah, there. well, you'd have had to write Ron Paul in at that point because he would yeah. he, didn't, he didn't get the nomination. So, yeah, I, I you know my uncle had uh, I remember this conversation to this day, man. I, I remember telling him I was like, "You gonna vote for Obama?" I'm like, "I don't know, man." I was like, "I don't know, like I'm not sure about his policies." And I think uh, you know Ron Paul. It seems like from what he was saying, you know, I thought that's what America needed. Mm. You know, then he hit me with, oh, you know, Ron Paul's racist, right? I'm like, mm. oh my God, come on, man. You know, but if, like I said, if, if it came down to them two, I think I would have stuck with Ron. You know, um, you know, I just, I just felt that, uh, you know, Obama, and, and it was true, you know, Obama was just more of the same, you know, he mm -hmm. wasn't that much different than uh, Bush Jr. He's just a little bit mm -hmm. smoother and stuff like that. I, I mean, I don't know if we were supposed to go into this. No, no, that's, no, that's, that's straight. No, that's straight. You should be straight. Um, yeah. No, cause that, cause it, it's, it's almost like it's uh it, it's like the front man for the, for the regime. Right. You know, like it's not even, you're not, you're really not even voting for who you think you are. You're voting, <laughs> you're voting for the, 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 the public the spokesperson. <laughs> Right, right. Like, it's so funny because it's like my parents, like Obama and my uncle, and like you see it in like every household. It's like mass brainwashing. It's kind of it's like Obama right next to the Michael Jordan picture. <laughs> <laughs> so you, Dude, you know you're in that specific household. My, I got a like, friend. I got a friend. He's got a Mount Rushmore with Obama on it, painted and <laughs> hanging on the wall in his house. Oh, my mom has an, an Obama. Uh, like a paint Mount Rushmore or a, a, a paint, yeah. Well, this wow. one is Mount Rushmore with like, with like a, 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 I don't know if it's a fifth head and, and it's Obama or if it's, or if he replaced one of the other ones or something like that. I don't remember. But so I was just like, oh, okay. All right. For me, I could just replace them all with Cthulhu. The, the <laughs> Damn, oh, HP Lovecraft shit in here. Yeah, um. right. So, so I think this is a good place to put my opinion in on this whole election thing. <laughs> <laughs> real quick um because you know i i i was a ron paul guy too and mm -hmm. i have since you know involved myself past any kind of like step towards uh, statism but i this is one of my favorite quotes that i like to use and this will probably be the only time you'll hear me make this statement and that is i agree with stalin <laughs> that those who vote decide nothing and those who count the vote decide <laughs> everything it, it, you know, I've been referring for some time this election cycle as the selection, because I think at the end of the fucking day, they see that Trump is the divider in chief, that he is really good at pissing off the left, and that drives up ratings for the, for the mainstream media, and they aren't about to give that shit up. 
They're been, they aren't about to let that go. They, they want their cash cow to continue to stay in power. And if Biden wins, everybody will see this kid sniffing piece of shit for what he is. And the, everyone will run away from the Democrats. So it allows them to keep Trump as, as the demon in front of them. Mm. What do you think about the, that analysis? I know you think Biden's going to last that long. I think, I think everybody ready to slide Kamali <laughs> in his place. You know, I do think that, you know, that's when it, you know, I'm trying to think of what's really going to happen. I do agree with you. Like, you know, a lot of times, just the, the majority of the times it's selected, you know, we're not really, they're trying to, they'll try to manipulate the masses to do what, you know, what they actually want. You know, I have a hard time, like you said, I have a hard time believing that all this money that mainstream media has made, I have a hard time leaving, believing they'll just give that up just for having Biden in there. You know, they, everything is about Trump. They can blame everything on Trump, you know, <laughs> like, like everybody, they tune into CNN, MSNBC, even Fox. It's the same Trump thing that Fox said. did with, uh, with Obama too. Like everything, right. it was like, like Obama was like a big moneymaker for Fox and for all the conservative uh, it was a different grift back then. It was the, <laughs> how can you, you know, look at, uh, was it Her uh, Harold Rains or whatever? And like all these different, like the connections to uh, Soros and all this stuff. And it was like, bro, you think Soros is only connected to, <laughs> to Obama and that right. side? Like, shit, he's, he's in all of them. <clears throat> yeah, I, I find it hard to believe they would give that money up. I mean, it's been he's, he has been in cash count for them. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I would think that the Democrats would just, Hey, we'll just sit back another four years, then we'll try. We'll try again in you know twenty twenty four. But you know, on on the other hand, Biden, just like you said, nobody believes Biden will last a term. You know, I would think he wouldn't win last two years. I would think they, if they wanted to put a woman president in, this would be their best chance. You know, they would just say, Biden, you got to retire, man. <laughs> you can't, or give him the the vid, the vid or something like that, and <laughs> right. then. Kamala would be running. So I, I, it's hard to tell, but I, I'm kind of leaning towards Trump. Mm. It's so weird I, I, that, oh, go ahead. Uh, it's weird that um, it's like, I was, I was sitting down in like a bonfire setting with my aunt and uncle a couple of months ago. And I was going over there all confident because, you know, I'd be like, I, I digest you guys' stuff like it's religion <laughs> to a T. So it's like real good on like politics and things of that nature. And like I sit down and like I talk to them about like how Biden's acting. They're like, oh, well, he's a real politician. And I'm like, have you guys seen like how he like really reacts and talks to like everybody around him? It's like the guy is like really like regressing <laughs> like a child. It's like fast and it's sad mm -hmm. nobody like really points it out and uh, agrees with the other side yeah you look at him 10 years ago versus now and and it, and we've all like we're at the point now where alzheimer's dementia and all that stuff has been around long enough that we've all got that uncle or a grandparent or maybe even a parent that we've seen go through this stuff and it's like textbook like it's you, the the stuff where like stuff starts slipping he has trouble remembering stuff and he's like stumbling over like this isn't just like he's always been kind of goofy like he's pretty sharp like he, he was an idiot but he was sharp <laughs> you know he could talk <laughs> he can't anymore <clears throat> yeah you definitely look at those old videos he was a uh, he, he he was sharp, but he was an asshole, you know. He was. Like, he, was. Like, he was an asshole to everybody. And yeah. you know, sometimes it slips through, you know, mm -hmm. like when he, he was pointing at the guy's face um oh, uh, yeah. I, I, last summer. Right, right. You know, at that it, rally or whatever. Where the guy <laughs> yeah, yeah like sometimes it slipped through, and that's why, you know, they put a lid on his campaign. They've it's interesting the way they've tried to hide him and like it's the same thing they did with Hillary in sixteen, right? I mean she was like yeah. stumbling and stuff, and they'd like They'd like usher her. They'd be like holding her, going to the car and everything. And I don't understand what it is because it's because I've seen she's come out, you know, a few little appearances here and there since then. And I guess, uh, I don't know, I guess they got her hopped up on something because she's she seems a little bit more stable than she was even. I think she was probably just fatigued. You know, that, that yeah, yeah, you got to understand like one, one of those campaigns. She was trying to win a, an yeah. election. You know, she was actually trying to win. You know, They're running you know like 22 saying? hour days and shit like that <laughs> for those things. Yeah, yeah, and, wear she, them out. and that, you know, that's a testament to Trump. Like, how is he? He can stand up for this. Like, he must got, like, I guess, you know, he never drank <laughs> or anything, did drugs. He's yeah. got some endurance for it. Yeah, yeah. For well, sure. Uh, he definitely got, got the, you know, 
as much as I don't like any of these pieces of crap, the, the, you got to give it to Trump, man. That dude knows how to troll. That dude knows, <laughs> that dude knows how. He's the best. <laughs> I know. You know, he knows how to, to, to keep going and keep pushing and keep doing that. I mean, my wife and I had a conversation last night. I'm never going to vote for Trump. Let's just be clear. Mm. That's never going to happen. I'm not going to vote. I'm not going to waste my damn time to get out there and do this stupid shit. But, Some of us are stupid, I guess. I don't know. But, but, but I'm not going to go do that. Uh, you know, but if I, if you had to put a gun to my head and I had to go vote for somebody, I probably would vote for Trump. And the, the reason is because at least I have a chance that he's not a complete and total sellout. You know, I, I think he's mostly a complete and total sellout, but there's a tiny little chance that he might not be. Well, I, uh, I went today and voted for uh, the person that Jade doesn't think is in the newspaper. I don't know. I want to know how Jade knows about the newspaper. Like, they don't have newspapers anymore, Unc. She's asking you if Kanye's even in the newspaper. <laughs> Well, she goes over to her Nana's house, you know, oh, okay. her Nana. That's where she got this, you know, <laughs> anti-Trump thing. My, my mom filled her full of yeah, stuff. Yeah, uh, um, well, she was, well, I thought she was just trolling you about Kanye. You were like, who is Kanye West? Is he even in the newspaper? <laughs> no, I, I don't really, like, I, she wouldn't know who, about Oh, she Kanye. wouldn't? Okay. I don't, I don't really... I don't think I put anything on for him about him or something. I was watching that Joe Rogan interview the other day. It was, yeah, was yeah. kind of interesting. What'd you think about, did you finish it yet? Or I know you said the other day you were like an hour into it or so. Yeah. I think I, I got like 15 minutes. I don't know if I'm okay. going to go back to it. Um, it was, it was interesting, you know, um, you know, he's a, he, like he's kind of all over the place sometimes. Yeah. Um, but you know, his heart is, is in the right place. He, he actually believes, you know, mm -hmm. um, you know, he, he wants to win. Um, you know, he's not going to do it this year. I mean, this year, um, he yeah. might take it a little bit more seriously in 2024. Yeah. Um, but I think he's laying the blueprint down. Cause I think at some point, you know, you know, I think Trump opened the floodgates for non-politicians to win, mm -hmm. you know, and I think, uh, somebody's going to come along. Like I would, I would think I was on my, my stream. I was like, I don't know the Rock or uh, mm. yeah, yeah, you, yeah. I remember you saying that. Yeah. There, there's other the, people. The, the more uh, the likable celebrities, you yeah, know. or you know, or businessmen like uh, I don't know if Mark Cuban ever wants to get serious. Mm -hmm. You know, I think mm -hmm. they, they were talking about Oprah a couple a few years back, like possibly running this year. I don't, I don't know if that's mm -hmm. that probably wouldn't. I fly, remember, but, I remember seeing that pop up. Yeah, but like, come on now, like. <laughs> <laughs> she don't want to do it. That, see, the only yeah. thing, she yeah. doesn't want to do mean, it because she know all her dirt's gonna come up. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. Like that, that's gonna be that's the uh, that's well, that's down with all us regular folks. Well, so so where like when 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 uh, you and Hotep Jesus did when he interviewed you and y'all weren't doing the the Hotep's been told you show. Um, you talked about like your, your parents and the, the influence there and how that there was, you know, it was mostly like, you know, Democrat household and everything, but, uh, but that your dad kind of had like a conservative um, mindset, you know, personal mindset or whatever, but like, where did you get, cause you, you're, you're not like a typical conservative. You're, you're, you know, you're more kind of like where, where we are on stuff like war and, and some of the, you know, the deep state shit and all that kind of stuff where it's that you're, you're not just like, <laughs> you're not the, you know, the typical conservative that watches uh, Fox News and, and drinks the Kool-Aid on that stuff. So where did that come from? Uh, I don't know, just being honest with myself, you know, mm. um, I think, uh, I want to say, you know, the Iraq war, the second Iraq war was kind of a turning point, you know, uh, because the evidence was flawed. Everybody knew that, you know, anybody that looked at it looked, knew that. And I'm like, man, why are we doing this, man? You know, mm. and it, it, it hurt me that we, we went through it and like, and like, like we're killing these people for nothing. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. that's what were you already out of the air force at that point? Yeah, I was already out okay. of the air force at that okay. point, you know? Um, so that's so right. Guess... But you had seen that too. You had seen like the, the shit that you go through and you know, the, as you get kind of your military uh, training and brainwashing and everything else that, uh, that comes with that stuff. Yeah, I mean, I was over, uh, I was in Saudi Arabia, TY, I went to Germany, Italy, um, I saw the world, uh, I'll never regret, you know, joining, you know, mm -hmm. it, 
you know, I was a kid, you know, I, I came from a, a, a broken home, you know, and I needed some uh, discipline. I'll, I'll, I'll never, I'll, I'll never regret joining, you know, um, it, but, you know, on the other side, you know, when you look at what happens over the years uh, with the Iraq war, um, you know, Liberty, you know, the people, the soldiers are, are expendable and stuff like that. Mm. And, and I, I didn't, that doesn't sit too well for me, you know? Mm-hmm. So when I, um, I guess I was always kind of uh, conservative in my beliefs, you know, that my dad was kind of was, but, you know, he voted Democrat thanks to Lyndon B. Johnson, I guess. Um, but, you know, when that happened, I was just like, you know, to be honest, you know, when Trump came along, I was just like, you know, he he talked the good talk that first mm-hmm. time. You know, he he actually called out the Iraq war, which was big to me. You know, I'm like, we finally had somebody that would call them out for their, their, the bushes for their lives. You know, that was big to me. And I and every time, you know, when I get on Facebook with these normies and they act like Trump is the worst thing that ever happened to America, I'm like, we just killed a million Iraqis not even a decade ago, a little over, right. a, little over a decade ago. Right. Y'all just going to brush that off. We we just destroyed Libya. We just f- financed mm-hmm. destroying Syria. I'm not trying to buy it. These were our last two administrations. I'm not trying to buy. It. He's the worst thing, you know. And when he ran in 2016, his his policy was America first, withdrawn people. You know, he hasn't really succeeded with Syria. You know, there's only there's really only a small pocket of troops there. But you know, it seems like he's in working the right direction with Afghanistan. Mm-hmm. You know, drawing them down. And drawing a rack down. So to me, that's kind of uh, a win. You know, looking at what really goes on behind the scenes, if he could do that much, you know what I mean? That's that's like a win because, you know, the the powers that be don't want that to happen. Mm-hmm. For sure. For, uh, me, for me, war is a racket. Like Smedley Butler said, this is all about big business. You, you said it yourself. It's about gold, oil, whatever it is. It's about building up empire around the world to to get resources and i'm with you when when i was i didn't vote for trump i i I voted in the last election i voted for gary johnson primarily so i could walk around and say i waved my johnson around in the middle of the room (laughs) but (laughs) but you know i did vote and and the reason was because he was the the closest thing that i saw to my own uh personal beliefs but when trump won I was like, okay, I'm going to give this dude a chance. I'm going to see, can he deliver on the, some of these promises? Because I was with you. I saw the, the, the anti-war stuff. I saw that. And then he dropped a Moab in, in the, you know, the mother of all bombs. <laughs> you know? And I'm like, well, you know. And, and, and I've watched him, him without congressional approval, you know, kill a you know an Iranian diplomat. I've seen him, you know, do a lot of the stuff that because war is one of my big issues, mm-hmm. and I've watched him not do that. Now, you know, one of the things with last week we had a friend of ours, Chris Gannon, on who uh, his primary like issue is uh, is the family courts and and what they do to fathers and those kinds of things. And one of the things that he said within that was, well, Trump said that he's going to, to try to help, you know, alienated parents and all of this stuff, but he can't do it until after the election. And I was like, oh my God, Chris, come on. <laughs> yeah, I, I will say like that, that sometimes the, uh, the, the 8,300, uh, whatever degree chess, um, or dimensional chess <laughs> stuff gets a little a little out of hands and I was like wait how, so how many limbs do you have to cut off before you're going to save my life um cuz I I'm all out of limbs just about now so what were you going to say Nico you you were you were about to uh, uh I was going to ask on. Um, how are you raising your daughter um on like I mean he got two, he got two daughters oh okay well, yeah. Oh, yeah. oof my bad <laughs> um Jade uh you said that um and Anna's and she has like a lot of hate or not hate but you know not um positive speech about Trump and then you you know that's your that's your president so it's like in certain regard so like do you try and like persuade her not to like really care about politics since she's so young or 
do you just say, yeah, he's an individual, don't worry about it, or how do you go about that? You know, that's a good question. Um, you know, sometimes I, I had one talk with her because it was getting on my nerves. I'm like, yo, this, don't don't fall for this. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Uh, but usually I don't, I don't even try to, you know, I don't try to interject. Uh, I, to me, they're too, a little too young to inject politics into that. You know, I don't know what my mom's doing. I told her about that. I'm like, yo, chill out. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But, you know, I think, uh, you know, when you get older, I'm going to drop, I'm definitely going to drop some red pills. You know, but, but, you know, matter of fact, one of the reasons I do my YouTube channel is like right. I want to leave a um, like a uh, a time cap you know, for for my yeah. for my daughters, you know. So when like I'm dead and gone, you know, I'm like, you know, I I actually told her this. I was like, when I'm gone, man, just go back and look at my YouTube channel and just listen to all the videos. You know, what I'm mm -hmm. saying I don't care. It takes you ten years <laughs> to listen to it, you know. But I, that's why I I I I, I try to I'm kind of leaning off of it now. You know what I mean? Because I I just think it's too much for them to process. And I think mm -hmm. what a lot of times happens when people, you know, push their politics on the kids, you know, is like they don't understand it and it just might go blow over their head. You mm -hmm. know, uh, I, I, I'll talk about certain things, you know, but it's like, and plus, the, I don't know, it's it's like, I think you got to do girls different, you know. Uh, mm -hmm. They're they're a different beast than than boys, you know. Yeah. <laughs> like it, yeah. they're way more emotional and stuff like that. So I don't. I, I try to lay off of it, but um, eventually I I will have a sit down talk. With them. You gonna try for a boy? Or are you done? I don't know, man. <laughs> you don't know. <laughs> but jury's still you know, out because on that. you know, if you try for a boy, I'm just gonna get another girl. Oh know? no, look, bro. I got I got an <laughs> uncle. I, look, I got an, so we're Catholic. I got an uncle. He's got. He's got five girls and he finally had a son on number really? six. And so it was like, he just kept trying for a boy. He's like, Oh, all right. We're going to try again. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> so it's just like, and he's like, he's like in his fifties now. And his, uh, his son is like six or seven or something like that. So it's like, it took him, he was in his mid forties before he, uh, before he, before he finally got the, the, the six one and got, got a boy. But, uh, I mean, not that he didn't love all his girls and everything like that, but man, that's a lot of, uh, that's a lot of weddings to pay for. It's a lot of hormones to deal with. Um, I got one daughter and it's uh, her, between her, my wife, and now we live with my mother-in-law. It's uh, I got enough mommies uh, to boss me around. Uh, I don't know what I'd do if I had, uh, if I had any more. Well, what, uh, so when you, when you decided to, to put the MAGA hat on back, you know, in, was it 15 or 16, early 16 or something like that? So was that, it was during this, this, it was early. It was whenever the primaries was that during the pri Republican primary. Yeah. 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 So did you, did you see this, <laughs> this grift machine coming or did you, did, were you just kind of like, look, man, this is, this is what, you know, th there ain't nothing wrong with saying make America great again. And then it just kind of popped off after that. Um, Cause it got, it got crazy. It got huge. I didn't think it would get as big as it got. You know, uh, it went crazy, man. It got so big, I had to stop wearing it. And I'm like, man, <laughs> I'm not even like. It's just too many people out there. Right. Like it was so so. It was crazy, you know. Um, but I guess looking back at it, you know, once I, I made a, a, a voting for Donald Trump video, you know, what I'm mm -hmm. saying, and I had, you know, had the mega hat, you know. But you have to remember, you know, it wasn't the the vitriol wasn't as bad as it right. is now you know you could get away with it as you know as a black person you know right. i could get away with it you know uh i've matter of fact i'll tell you a story one time i was in dunkin donuts and this guy I was wearing it and this white guy came up to me and was like you're voting for trump and it's like yeah i was like yeah man i'm voting for trump too he was like you get we wear that hat i was like yeah i don't got no problems he's like man sometimes people just like i I, his guy said he was with his kids one time and, and he was wearing a hat and you know people went crazy on him and stuff mm. like that you know i never really i had people look at me i remember i was in walgreens one time and <laughs> this girl she looked at the hat and she was like like it, like it was shocking to her. yeah it's like, like it the, was, it's like the facial expression version of the uh, charlemagne biden interview it's like you ain't black <laughs> <laughs> it's like, uh. no no i think it was more like <clears throat> Like disgust. Ah, no surprise. Oh, disgust. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. I mean, she was disgusted with. Oh, like, so it wasn't like, just like a shock, like a surprise sort of. Uh, okay. No, nah, they were they yeah. were on it. I was so, but I was kind of. It was early before that that that, that all that came. But it's 
you know, but once he got in office, you know, that, mm-hmm. that grift, that grift took off, man. That was, yeah. that was just unreal, man. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I saw a dude uh, uh, in the airport uh, last week and he's this white guy and he had like a mask with like Trump 2020 on it, a MAGA hat and like a Trump Jersey with 45 <laughs> on it and all this shit and everything. White guy, white guy. Dude, <laughs> he's just standing there at my gate. <laughs> this black guy walks by and I don't even have to like, I didn't have to really like pay much attention. I just see him. He just goes, he just looks, he just looks at that guy. And just and like he, oh. he was getting mad. Like he was steaming underneath. Like, you know, he was so mad just from seeing it and everything. And I'm like, look, man, I get you. Like, I, I'm not a, I, I didn't vote for him. And I'm, you know, I didn't vote for him this time either. I voted for, uh, for Kanye, but, uh, but it's, uh, it's just like, I don't know. That's one of the things I don't, that I hate about politics and about how like much, control that sort of stuff that they try to tell you that it, that we have is that people get so mad because it's like you're choosing their overlord you know and like no everybody wants that they, they want to force their overlord on everybody else but nobody wants the other guys to force theirs on and so i'm just like how about we just don't do that anymore <laughs> and we just take care of our own shit instead and leave each other leave each other alone for you know as far as like picking a president that's gonna be like a you know what everybody feels like is a dictator and is going to ruin their life well yeah i think you know the the american media this shows you how powerful the media propaganda mm-hmm. machine is yeah. like they turn this guy into the second incumbent coming stalin hitler whatever hitler, you want yeah, whatever yeah, guy yeah, right. you want to call it mm-hmm. and that's why I, I i you know these normies on normie book facebook whatever <laughs> you want to call it right this is why i call them out on it i'm like Bush killed millions, man. You guys were never this mad. They were right. never this no, mad. In fact, about they're coming Bush out now. Junior. They're coming out now and propping up Bush. Like, don't you I remember? Believe my eyes, man. Don't you remember Bush? It was so much. It, it, it back when you could respect the president. Like, y'all didn't respect. <laughs> y'all didn't respect him first of all. And if you did, why the fuck are you respecting him? Like, because of what you just said. Like, you know how many people died? Like, come on. These people committed war crimes. The last yeah. two presidents, war crimes, mm-hmm. several times. Multiple. Yeah, yeah I it, have a question. You're right. The, the, the thing is, the, Trump doesn't have shit on those other people. I, I will grant you that. He, he, you know, he doesn't, when it comes to the evils of government, um, in fact, I think that in, in many ways, he helps our case. He helps an anarchist case because you know, seeing the the buffoonery right in front of your eyes, you know, whether it's him yelling and screaming or whether it's the tweets or whether it's, it it shows people that these are just normal people who have been handed power. One of the things that, you know, that's one of the things that's cool about his, about the fact that he uses Twitter is that he has mainlined his own thoughts into everybody's hands without having to go through a press conference or any kind of, you know, big interview. You remember like when Obama went on Fox news and did an interview there and it it was like a big deal because like he actually went on Fox news and didn't just go to the friendly. Well, Trump is just like, fuck that. I'm just tell, I'm just going to talk straight to the people. I'm just going to go on Twitter and tweet this shit and I'll make a little video and I'll send them a video. And it's, it's a whole different world. It's like you, you, you've hacked um, relations with the populace. For sure. And one of the things that, and in, in, uh, one of the, the, the goals that we have as a, a program is to have people on that have real solutions. And one of the things that when we were, when Chad first introduced me to um, you and Hotep Jesus, um, one of the things that really, you know, like stuck with me because Chad was like, hey man, you got to check these guys out. They're not just you know, you're run-of-the-mill conservative, whatever. These, these guys have some real ideas, and they're moving for sure in our direction. And so I went and checked you out. And one of the things, you know, the whole concept of Hotep and Bill, the whole idea of building community, you know, of, of you know, developing your own solutions to a particular problem is one of the things that I think that you particularly bring to the table is is ideas and thoughts about how to work together you know so often you know when we talk about politics it's about how do we divide people and i think that that one of the things that makes 
you know, what you do and, and the, the, the people that are around you in the ODEP nation that I, that I envy to a degree is your ability to bring people together. Um, so what kind of led in your own development to you moving in those kinds of directions? <laughs> I think it was almost by necessity, you know, um, you know, just looking out from, you know, the quote unquote black community, you know, I think uh, the, they're at a crossroads, you know, um, like how can they not see their, be, their you being used for these votes? You know, you, you, you put, you put Obama in office twice, you know, and you mm -hmm. didn't really get anything from it. You know, you got to take the ball in your court. Now, I, I almost like I kind of agree with like the voting thing, you know, like I, the first time I voted was, you know, that that that, that Obama election and stuff mm -hmm. like that. I don't put too much course in it, you know, because I think, you know, you know, two two choices isn't, isn't a choice. You know, it isn't. It's it's mm -hmm. it's fixed. It's two sides of the same coin. Like everybody. Mm -hmm. Everybody with a brain should know that, mm -hmm. you know, but you still got to, you still got to, um, you still got to compete. You still have to build. You still have to, you do something. You can't wait for these people in office that don't really have your best interests in hand. They don't, you know, like, I, like the big thing, you know, one of the other things about Trump was, you know, the illegal immigration. You know, my thing was like, why would you import, you know, job competition that's all that's the, my only reason for like hey we got to slow it down or make it you know put some semblance of order into it now the people on the right they went with the you know some people with race thing and you know demographics whatever you know people can have multiple reasons but i'm like man i'm like why are we we're we're putting more people now i don't blame people for coming over here I would do, if I was in their shoes, I would do the same thing. Mm -hmm. But why the people that American people are here, why would you import your job competition for yourself, for your grandkids, et cetera, et cetera? That's, that's foolish. That's foolhardy. They, no other country would let you do this, you know, but they were letting it do it here. So now, that's another, you know, that's another example. You got to take it in your own life. Like, I was like, man, I'm, I'm, I'm pulling a switch for Trump this time. Look, like, cause he promised, you know, Come to find out the Chamber of Commerce wants cheap labor, so it ain't gonna go really gonna happen. <laughs> they're still right. coming over here. Yeah. But at least I tried. You know? they, got, they got it on both sides. They either they're either uh, bringing it in or they're they're sending uh, manufacturing overseas to, to get cheap labor there. So, so I, I got I gotta dig into this a little bit uh, <laughs> okay. um, because uh, first of all, I, I wanna give you a nod to the to the understanding what Emma Goldman, who was an anarchist, uh, anarcho-communist actually, but an anarchist said, she said, uh, a politician promises you heaven before the election and gives you hell after. And uh, that's absolutely what you're talking about. He's, he made some promises and didn't, then, then didn't fulfill them, which is what politicians do. But when, on this particular issue, I want to challenge you a little bit. Milton Friedman uh, kind of famously said that you can't have, and I'm paraphrasing, but it's going to be close. Um, you can't have a, a open borders and a welfare state at the same time. Absolutely makes sense. You can't do that. You can, and you can't, and with the job stuff that you're talking about, absolutely. You can't expect people in a controlled market to, um, to compete with people that are coming in and getting cheap labor. You know, if you're requiring, you know, you know, this guy down the road to be paid $7 an hour, he's never going to be able to compete with a guy that's working for three, right? The problem with both of those, those analogies based off Friedman is that everyone attacks the open border side. Why not attack the other side? We need a free market, what we should be pushing for. And I, I will grant you that maybe we need to step there and get there eventually, and that you, you may need some control before we get there. And I would actually go back to Adam Kokesh's plan of let the states handle it and so on and so forth. But my, I would say if, if your, your problem 
is with the, you know, Jose or whoever from Mexico comes across the border and he's, and he's working for $3 and you can't compete with that. And why would you want you to take your job? Well, why are you letting the guy that makes it's the rules at the fucking state house decide what you can and can't work for. A free market is where you and two, somebody else decide what you are willing mm. to work for and what they are willing to pay and you come together voluntarily. Why wouldn't you attack the other side of that and go after the people controlling the market? Now you raise a good point. You know, I, I look, uh, I go back to Normie book again and I made that statement, <laughs> you know, and, a lot of people come back was like, well, don't attack the people, you know, the, the, the immigrants, you know, you mm-hmm. attack the people making the laws, you attack the people employing them, you know what I'm saying? I mean, you can do both, you know, I, I'm yeah. just saying, like, what's easier for, you know, um, you know, for the public, you know, but you're, you're right, you know, it, it's, it's not just, you shouldn't just attack it from, you know, one end, you should attack it from the, the other as mm-hmm. well. Yeah, but you end up with the the people there. There's a lot of the uh, the the like the border stuff is kind of like entangled with the minimum wage stuff, and the, and like nobody is like, or very few people are like, hey, we should just abolish the minimum wage, and then <laughs> then it kind of it, it starts to starts to work, but but then you you have all these all these other things that the the inflation, the Federal Reserve. I mean, it, there's a it's a big. Uh, our garden is full of weeds. I'll say that much. And uh, trying to trying to pull the weeds without pulling any of the good plants out is is very difficult at this point. Nico, you had a question a while back. I didn't want to uh, let that uh, go un, unasked. It was uh, about um, basically how did um, was there always was there always this much like political pressure and presence amongst the world? Um, like I remember. Like not too long ago, I'd be on my phone and then I'd see this goat shit and I'd be like, hold on, wait a second, this wasn't here. And like a uh, like couple of years ago, I really wouldn't remember seeing a lot of things that would say go vote. Granted, I, like this is my second election. Um, but I, for all of you guys, would you notice that there was a, a switch if there was one or was this always consistent pressure? of political um like balance on you or you're on this side and you're on that side i think it's always been there but i think it's made i think it's more intense uh the, like the, the last uh this hillary trump and then this this election here um they're ramping up the hysteria a little bit more because I, I remember clinton versus bush when perot was running and 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 the um well, he ran in 92 and 96, didn't he? Against when it was Dole and, and uh, Clinton, he ran that time too. But um, I remember there being like a lot of, but it was a different kind of energy. It was more of that like kind of uh, the Obama-McCain energy where Clinton was like the the superstar, you know, um, all the teenagers, you know, MTV was doing all this shit with, you know, kids and, you know, trying to get the, the youth vote out and all this other kind of stuff a lot more enthusiasm based whereas this is a lot more fear based these last couple but it's still the same thing like every time you you know Unc probably and, and marcus probably remember the, the days before social media when you would get this shit emailed to you and you get like these chain emails that like they'd have like 17 forward arrows on, on the side of it you could barely even read it they were like you know you'd read like three words per line um, cause somebody had forwarded it so many times or whatever, but it was these whole long things about all this, you know, shit about like why, uh, why, why Gore was the worst thing ever or why Bush was the worst thing ever. And, um, it's always been, there's always been that sort of like that tension and that, you know, it's the most important election of our lifetime thing, because what they do is they make you forget that they told you that the last one was the most important because this one is so much more important and it's never been mm-hmm. this important. <laughs> You know, like that's the, that's the thing because it, it always, they want to make sure that you forget that no matter who has been president, you go into work on time and you finding the best job that you can find and you taking care of your shit and paying your bills, taking care of your family and not hooking up with the wrong girl and all this kind of stuff. That's the kind of stuff that has the most dramatic impact on your life versus go and pull a lever every four years. But they want you to think that that pulling the lever is the is the the, 
the pinnacle of doing something. I definitely think it was social media that that uh, pumped this up a little bit more, mm -hmm. you know, because I think in 2016, I think Trump won the, the meme, you know, the great meme war. You know what I right. mean? That was a big thing on mm -hmm. poll everywhere. You know, I and I think one of the reasons he won, you know, his social media game and his followers social media game was way stronger than Clinton's. You know, and I think this time around, it's it's I think the other people saw that that's what happened. So now I think you're getting these people stepping up. But, you know, they're only stepping up just to say they hate Trump. They're not really like the Biden bros. It isn't really that deep. They just they just don't want to they just don't want Trump anymore. Right. You know, so I think it was definitely social media, you know, it, as it got bigger and bigger and bigger and we spend more and more time on it. You know, that now I think you see that the more venom that comes out of it. Mm. What do you think uh, as far as the social media and the meme war stuff? Like, uh, let's explore this because uh, I did, it just can't kind of came to me. Like, you talk about poll and like all the like the Reddit, the subreddits and all that stuff that are like they're just out there and they they just don't give a shit. And uh, you, we and we we see some of these memes come across. Like, you think like the PC culture makes it to where it's harder for them to actually go hard with the memes and not come off corny. Whereas the other stuff that is just like, they're just like, I don't know. It's, it's way more, uh, dank and just like, just savage <laughs> than, than sometimes that stuff is. And that's why it, that's why it wins. Cause it actually hits. It actually has a sense of humor and, and lands. Uh, I, I don't know. I, Have you, you ever know. seen, you ever seen some of these left memes? I, they're, I terrible. <laughs> they're terrible. They're terrible. It's, it's bad. It's like they have like four paragraphs of shit on there or something like that. It would be like a picture of a door and then like a whole you know novel written on the door. And it's like, man, I'm not reading all that shit. You gotta take Next. a look. Like you just said, Trump is a great troll. Who lands the best punchlines? Trolls do. Yeah, like, exactly. It's not. It's not the little nerdy kid who like thought they were. The, the, the one that was bullied, the one that was bullied is on the other side of the aisle. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, like, that's right. Uh, and, you know, it just goes to show the rhetoric and, like, how it can be controlled with um, feelings and emotions. Yeah, Speak I didn't think about that. It's kind of like being in the cafeteria in high school and whoever's whoever's dogging on people the best <laughs> wins. And uh, when all when and that, and that's why I think some of the crackdown on social media happens, too. Is because like holy shit, man! Like, we don't have controller for this. <laughs> this, they're getting these jokes off. Let's shut it down, like they did with that Ice Cube and uh and uh Fifty Cent meme with the Trump hats on or whatever. They're like, this is the, like no shit. It's doctored. God damn, man. how fucking stupid do you think we are? <laughs> That's amazing, fact checkers, man. Like this is really, <laughs> really insane. insane. It's just like they're using fact checkers to tell people how to think, really. Like yeah. it's uh, how can you answer something? I've seen fact checkers say it's mostly false. Like what is mostly false? Oh, is yeah. it true or not? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right. Like come on, man. I've seen that a, a ton of times. They're, They're really trying to get people how to choose, make sure they got people thinking the right way. Yeah, they did one today or yesterday with Trump on. Uh, oh shit, what was it about? It's about something, and it, it, they have like, it's it on his. No, it's some. It's a tweet that he put out. And on the tweet is like a, a disclaimer and they've limited interaction. You can't comment on it and you can't like it. All you can do is, is uh, retweet it or quote retweet it. That's all you can do. And there's a thing on there that says some or all of this might be false. And I'm like, man, could you imagine if they had done this with the, if you like your doctor and your health plan, you can keep it. Like, cause that, that's all it was. It was like Trump just said something and they were like, that may or may not be true. And they, and they were like, and Twitter just like cracked down on it. I'm like, God damn, man. Uh, and I'm like, it's like I said, I, I, I'm not a, I, I did not vote for Trump, but I mean, it's, he's still the president. Like I, this is somewhat virgin territory for like, where they're, they're trying to censor the president. <laughs> like, where, you remember, can you imagine like the, the, like actually censoring the president? In any time before now, like it, it's this is the most insane uh, shit I've ever seen.
well they put a bullet in one man so. well yeah no, well okay yeah yeah i mean like yeah that's some big time sense yeah, right yeah, there yeah, yeah. <laughs> no more than one but uh but yeah that's uh shit man i said i stepped right in that one god damn i was just talking about like uh speaking but yes um holy shit yeah that's uh yeah the he's, thing is, though, he's on your wall behind you as a matter of fact it, <laughs> the, the the thing is though as much as you know i agree that for instance they they do go after the the media is certainly biased mm -hmm. all that stuff and they certainly go after trump with much more vigor than they ever like 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 they fluff fucking biden up with all kinds of dumb crap but but so that's true but it also works in the opposite way. Mm -hmm. You have to, you know, these people come together and shake hands. You got to remember they're meeting at the, the, the green after they're having their little pretend <laughs> fight on Twitter or wherever, shaking right. hands and doing whatever. Hey man, do you see where, where the, you're, you guys, you know, censored me out there? That was hilarious. My people yeah. are eating that crap up. My people are going to show up to the poll at like, well, not only that, but it, it can actually it can actually like do the opposite where it can actually make the censored quote unquote material go more viral because people are like spreading it on purpose because they know that it, they're like they're trying to censor this. Retweet it everywhere. And and it's uh like they did with the uh the frontline doctors. They they pulled all that stuff down and then people were just like pulling up out from under the it it, it was like it couldn't die. They keep people kept bringing it up and reposting it, and then they got their accounts deleted and so they stopped. But uh, I'm trying to find this uh, this tweet that Trump put out. But um, I wanted to I wanted to tell you like I had a uh, oh wait here it is uh, big problems and discrepancies with mail in ballots all over the USA must have final total on November third. Trump tweeted that and they're like banned. You <laughs> they're like we can't you cannot say anything like that and we will limit the activity on this tweet. I was like God dog man that's uh and there's like there's there's Isn't all kinds of like a stuff out big, there. Like, about, fire flash like hey guys you know yeah well that's what that's what marcus warning was saying over here yeah. like it should make you think like okay well if they're censoring one person and it's like it's a domino effect like mm -hmm. heard of slippery slopes so if they're censoring like very very like strong people who have power what makes you think that you know your little anthill voice has got a lot of authority with you because even mm -hmm. though you got a thousand uh there are a hundred and thousand retweets like the president most definitely has a lot more power than that and a little bit more pull than that. So it's, it's just funny how like things are, people become oblivious to a little bit of logic, especially, especially when overran by emotion. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, I, on the censorship note, um, because I'm unfamiliar, you know, it, I, I kind of got my start in all of this craziness for uh, becoming the press secretary for Adam Kokesh, who very well may be the most censored person on YouTube. So I've, I've watched and seen the, the censorship, you know, the, the fact that Adam has approaching a hundred thousand views or a hundred million views, sorry, and like a quarter of a million subscribers and then puts a video out and gets like 500 views. <laughs> you know that, that says some shit and yeah. but so i've kind of you know dug into some of that and i, I understand some of it and they pulled the video I, down they pulled the right. video off of his channel of him talking to a marine like he's because he's a marine and uh he's talking to another marine this guy was like uh coming to try to start a fight with him in a bar because he was giving a speech about war and how and and, and so the, they the guy like comes out he wants to beat adam's ass and adam like talks him down and and like you know just kind of like calmly like talks it down to like look you know i feel like i was lied to i feel like i was you know um i fell for some of the bullshit and i you know i you know i actually tortured people in iraq and like i feel bad about that and i and he, he went through this whole thing and by the time the thing's over with the guy like they're shaking hands and the guy takes a copy of his book and all this stuff but that's all that video is. And they censored YouTube it. took it down. Right. <laughs> like, what, um, what the hell? Like, nobody's, you know, given a Nazi speech in the video or anything like that. It's just, right. it's just a, a calm, uh, you know, de-escalation of what could have been a fight into, like, people getting along. But it was, uh, it's a, it's a non-pro-war um, 
anyway, go ahead. Finish your finish the so, point. So I was wondering, Unc, what have you faced some of the censorship issues um, that I, that I've seen? Yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, somehow, you know, like if you look at my videos from like 2015, 2016, I was getting like 40, 20,000 mm -hmm. views, 40,000 views, you know, then sometime uh, like 2017, 2018, they put the brakes on it, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> they was like, I was barely getting any views, you know what I'm saying? Like, that was right around the time that they killed the monetization too, wasn't it? This was they, when, uh, you know what really happened? When PewDiePie made those, yeah. he was making those corny videos and, mm -hmm. And then, then they used that to go like a New York, I, it was a New York Times. They said uh, some ads were some, like being on there. Right. They, they cut the, they put the brakes on a lot of people. And my views went totally way down. You know, I was almost like, I was just doing um, streams, man. I was hardly doing the daily stuff mm -hmm. like I used to, mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. know. But then um, this year, they, they kind of loosen up the brakes a little bit. You can get to more of your subscribers if you have them out there. But definitely, I've seen, I've seen the, the, the uh, I, to be honest, I try to keep my stuff kind of clean. Like my, my end goal isn't really, you know, for me, it's, you know, for, I want people for beyond posterity. me to see yeah. this. But I try to keep it clean. You know, I might talk in, I'm, I talk in a lot of coded language and stuff like <laughs> right. that. You know, they got it. They, I don't know. They're just, they haven't caught up to it yet, but mm -hmm. I, I follow people that, you know, that, that aren't so coded, you know, mm -hmm. um, you know, there's Scott, uh, Creighton, uh, I, I oh, yeah. butcher his uh, last name. Church uh, dog, yeah, yeah, Church right. dog. Creighton. Yeah, Creighton. Um, yeah, Ryan Dawson. He mm -hmm. he talk he talks really crazy. Uh, I mean, crazy about like you know he, he's really yeah. open about yeah. some. Yeah, <laughs> right. you know what I'm saying. Right. So I seen how they they've been getting really they they've gotten hammered. You know, I seen a lot of people get hammered. David Carroll, he's a uh, black conservative. Mm -hmm. He was mm -hmm. getting hammered. He don't even touch any of that stuff. You know, but it, they put the hands of the 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 band the, the band hammer in the hands of people like he's he was very critical of some women in certain ethnic groups mm -hmm. and they just went on him and he had to take some of the videos down hmm. you know um i kind of think they got caught with their pants down like i know we think that you know they're all knowing all powerful but you know they're still human beings at the end and they got to enforce these things you know yeah. it's it's a they're learning it just how how sometimes i think we're learning with this new technology yeah so I think they got caught with their pants down and then they, 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 that's where they went. They put the brakes on everything, mm -hmm. but then, you know, I think they realized they might've went too far on some things and, you know, and they, they loosened it up a little bit, but the censorship is definitely there. Yeah. You know, um, I don't know. I don't know what's the answer to it. You know, some people say go to bit shoot and everything else. Um, <laughs> Marcus is shaking know. his head because it takes forever to upload the bit. <laughs> <laughs> it takes like five times as long. To... Definitely, <laughs> that shit takes forever. Yeah, the, but... the thing is with with a lot of those solutions because you know I'd like like I I've I've been on mines and I, by saying I it's actually us we've been mm. on mines we've got, we're on me we we're on float we're we're on a lot of the stuff I the problem is. Ain't nobody else. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah same nobody. same thing with Gab. Like Gab is uh is like I like I've tried to go in there and I, I just it's so much it's so much easier when like Twitter you go in there and there's like there's people posting shit and it's like and there's funny shit and then you can like join in the fun and you and you can like post your own shit and then like I get to watch Unk like stomp on people's necks when he goes on one of his little uh well, i know you go in you go in you you just search like a couple of terms and then you just go like <laughs> boom you and now you and it's like uh whack-a-mole um <laughs> where unk is just dunking on people and uh you don't get that on gab like on gab it's just like it's kind of like i think maybe what twitter was like at the very 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 beginning when when people were like what the fuck is this what do, you know what are we even doing here i don't know let's just put some stuff I'll say something that I think sounds smart or I'll put, it was like Facebook, you know, like I'll put my cup of coffee picture on the, on, on here. Uh, some, a lot of times it ends up being like that. And it's just, it's harder. Like I have to like think about going to Gab and like posting something because it's just not as, um, it's, I mean, it's not that it's not user-friendly or anything like that. It's just the, the action's not there. The engagement's not there. And that's, it's kind of the, a large part of the point um, behind doing some of that. Stuff. But I, you know, I think another thing you have to realize is, you know, Rome wasn't built in the day. No, you know, Sticks and Hammer, 
you know, Sticks and Hammer is, is a good example of this. Mm-hmm. You know, he's one that just went, he goes to everywhere, you know, and he slowly mm-hmm. builds his, you know, his, his other channels on BitChute mm-hmm. or, or on uh, Daily Motion or I think, he, like he'll take some time and build it up. You know, I'm, I, I think he might be the second, like on BitChute, I don't know if he's one of oh, the, okay. the top people that has subscribers on there, but you know, that's the dude where that Richard Spencer uh, video was or whatever that uh, when he was talking about Biden riding with Biden. That's oh yeah, 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 yeah. That's the dude. Yeah, that's yeah. him. Yo, okay. so you got to realize, like, even though some of these are like Bitroom is way behind YouTube, you know, in speed and everything else. Mm-hmm. You know, it's it will have to take time, but you have to be consistent with it, and people have to stick with it. If people don't stick yeah. with it, it's never going to catch up. Right. You know? Right. It, it's yeah, we're to catch toe too. We might not game. live to see the the right. fruits of it, right? But if we if we help build the pillars, then <clears throat> people maybe people behind us can you know mm-hmm. bitch you can be on and popping and yeah. for and sure. And, and so. I keep I keep our bit shoot up. I don't post to it very often because you know frankly it is a pain in my ass just <laughs> to try to do it. But <laughs> but I do keep up me we and float pretty well. And at least um, give, you know, the people that have, have made a conscious decision that they don't want to buy into the Facebook monopoly or the Twitter monopoly, give them some of our stuff. Because what you're saying about building, I mean, I, I've seen, I mean, we, we've been building this channel for more or less a year. Mm-hmm. And, you know, and we've gone you know, sure, we're not, we're not, you know, who has been told you, you know, we've not made it, <laughs> you know, but we've we been all, telling you stuff. We just uh, right, right. haven't been hearing it, right. um. but we're building and, and, and for sure, I think, and I think that we offer things that, that a lot of people don't offer, you know, we, we come at this from a different perspective and because of that, I think that we may build something and I'm with what you said. If what we're all we're doing is laying the foundation for somebody else to build on, I'm good with that. Mm-hmm. I can handle that. Now I'd like to make some money. In the <laughs> <laughs> That'd be awesome. By the way, did I, did I mention we got a Patreon? Go ahead. <laughs> with the Patreon, yeah. Know? But, but it, it, but the point is to, to set people free. Mm-hmm. Right. So this has been about an hour. So I want to go ahead and take a quick transition yep. and close this out. Have a few more minutes with uh, with Unc on Aquarian After Hour. Get a little comfortable, have a conversation, and uh, and y'all can catch that up at our Patreon. Yep. So thank you for watching uh, the Evolution of the Revolution, and please go follow us at all of the different platforms we've talked about. Go buy our stuff. We have cool stuff at the store. Yeah. And, and I got the link to uh, Unk's uh, Grifting Season hoodie um, in the in the description. So that'll be down there. Um, and also his uh, his store in because he's got some more stuff besides just the Grifting Season. But that's the that's the hot perfect. item right now. And yeah, you got and shirts You got shirts and hats too? Or is it just, it's the shirts, just hats, shirts, and hoodie? Or just shirts, shirts, and, and, shirts and hoodie? Shirts okay. and hoodies, yeah. All right. Cool. And definitely go check out Unk on, especially, I, I particularly watch him on Twitter. I know, I, I think I follow him on Facebook too, but, um, but I'm, a, I'm everywhere. So that's part of it. But yeah, these are the people that are making differences in communities. And I think for Aquarian Anarchy, one of our biggest allies are the Hoteps. And that just is the facts. That's who we need to support. We need to lift each other up so that we rise, so that freedom-loving voices conquer and set you free, let you make your own decisions. Mm -hmm. Because very few people want to do that. Most people that want to come in and take over want to have control, and we don't. We Mm -hmm. want you to have control. So thank you for watching. This is Aquarian Anarchy. Peace. Peace.